are 15 games into the regular season, can we now grade every player on the Canadians? Did we wait long enough? Uh, probably not, but I'm doing it anyway. Here we go. Hopefully there's nobody missing because I didn't actually make this list. I just used my own tears on the left. But well, 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 look who's first. It's Mr. Newfoundland himself, Alex Newhook. Has he been living up to the hype after 15 games? Is he filling Michael Ryder's shoes? Maybe not yet, but he does have seven points so far to start this season, and I'm gonna toss him into the average pile. Boom, boom, boom. Next up, we got Arbor Jackeye. Let's see here, he's got one goal, he's got two assists, tossed Ryan Reeves over a net, and has taken some huge steps forward in his defensive game so far this season. His advanced statistics are trending in the right direction, and he's the first name getting tossed in my awesome tier because he's different, all right? Sometimes I forget he's only 22 years old. What a beauty. Next up is Brendan Gallagher, who's got just as many goals as Cole Caulfield now, but who's counting? Five goals, three assists for eight points. Yeah, yeah, he might have lost a step, yeah, he might have lost some hair in that one little spot at the top of his head that coffee I can't see anyway, but he's never gonna lose his heart. And I gotta say, I've been really impressed with him so far this season. Brendan Gallagher is going on the good list. Now let's move on to Caden Primo, who I haven't really seen a whole lot of, so let's just be fair to Caden. Okay, average it is. What do we got here? Well, holy shit, look who's next. It's Chris Weidman. <sighs> Diarrhea. Pure diarrhea. I know we haven't seen him play yet this season, but hey, someone's gonna have to be diarrhea, so it might as well be him. Speaking of diarrhea, next up we got Diarrhea Dvorak. Whoa. Just kidding, Christian, settle down. Dvorak's got one goal in five games. Yes, it was a nice one. Christian, and I wish you'd stop talking about it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put him on the average list right now because he's just a really average kind of guy, ain't he? Jeez. Next up, we got Cole Caulfield, who's got 14 points in 15 games. He leads the team in points, guys. I know we all want to see more, don't we? But he's my little bundle of joy, and he's going in the awesome list. Case closed. Pff, go pick on someone your own size. David Severt is up next, who had two assists in five games before going down due to an injury. Was he awesome? No. Was he Chewbacca? Yes. And just for rocking a Hogan mustache in November, he's going right on the average tear. Well done, Savard. All right, moving on. Now it's time to grade Jake Evans. He's got one goal. He's got two assists in 15 games. He's 52% at the faceoff dot, but still, I don't know, man. When you look at the numbers that he put up a couple of seasons ago, I'm still a little underwhelmed, okay? And he's got to watch out because his job could be on the line as early as next season. Now we got Jesse Alonen on the block. He's one of the strangest characters in Montreal right now, besides, well, maybe Pizzetta, when he's not taking his medication. But Alonen just can't seem to crack the Canadians lineup at all. He's got one goal in eight games so far. I feel like he, he's not really getting a fair shot, but at the same time, he's going to go in my underwhelming tier because, well, someone's got to keep Evans company. Next up is Honda Civic. Now listen, people like to drag him down a little bit, but I really like Honda the Civic. In fact, I like him so much that I'm going to put him in the good tier because he's good. He's so good, he's got no goals and no assists. Wait, what? Guys, hear me out. He's not that kind of guy. His defensive numbers have been pretty good, especially when you consider his workload. And for a guy that was scooped up off of waivers and making under a million bucks per season, playing nearly 20 minutes per night? Yeah, he's doing all right. Next up is Jordan Harris, who's also been really impressive. He's got three assists so far this season in 15 games, but he does all the little things so well, doesn't he? He's in the good tier. I'm going to allow it. Move on in, buddy. Oh, my God. Guys, a couple of tough conversations are coming up next. <sighs> it's Josh Anderson. Holy smokes, I can't even believe I'm doing it, but he's got to go in the diarrhea pile, doesn't he? This is tough. But when Yoel Armia has more goals than you do and Yoel Armia spent like 90% of his time in Laval, that's a problem. Chris Weidman doesn't want to be by himself in there, so Josh Anderson is going to have to keep him company. But listen, if I ever do another one of these things later on in the season, I bet he's going to climb up a couple of tiers. Yuri Slavkovsky. 
No, no, no. Come on down. And this is where shit's about to hit the fan, isn't it? You guys are probably watching me right now like a bunch of seagulls at McDonald's. <sighs> Listen, if I put him in the good tier, you're gonna say he's not. And if I put him in the diarrhea tier, you're gonna say I'm picking on him. Well, guess what? Is it okay to say, you know, that I'm I'm underwhelmed with Slavkovsky this season? <laughs> is that allowed? No, I'm not ripping on him. No, I haven't given up on him. In fact, I thought he played a wicked game against Vancouver, but still, production was Boys, definitely underwhelming. He's got one goal and one assist so far in 15 games. And yes, that's the worst points per game averaged in last season. But keep your pants on because I still think he can bring those numbers up. Rue is up next. Justin Perrin's got the Rue bod going on. I've been saying it since day one. And Barron's actually got three goals and one assist in 12 games since getting back into the lineup. I'm going to go ahead and put him in the good tier because I really like what I've been seeing. Oh, <laughs> Caden Gooley is next. Who's been unbelievable so far this season, guys. He's looking better and better every game. What a stud. Only 21 years old. He's got a goal and five assists in 11 games. He's been the Canadiens' best defenseman pretty much every game that he's played, in my opinion. And honestly, if anyone deserves their own tear on this team right now, it's Caden Gooley. And maybe Piz, who's actually up next. Look, how can I explain this? How many players in the league right now have one goal, one assist, and one demonic position? so far this season. Huh? One. And his name is Michael Pozzetta. He's a line four firecracker. His curls are unmatched in the NHL right now. Don't at me. And Pozzetta is definitely going on my average tier because he does exactly what he's been brought into the lineup to do. Crash and bang, protect his base, and just scare the living shit out of people. Moving right along now, Mike Matheson is next. And he's got himself 12 points, four goals and eight assists so far this season in 15 games. Yes, he's been struggling defensively at times, but he's also one of the most dangerous offensive defensemen that the Canadians have. But he wants to be, of course. El Capitan is next. It's Nick Suzuki who's been really heating up lately. He's got 13 points in 15 games, 6 goals, 7 assists. Yes, he had a bit of an underwhelming start, but he's as hot as Pizzetta's curling iron right now. And he's good enough for my awesome list. Kazakh stands right now. Raphael Harvey Bedard is probably going to be a hot topic as well. He's got 4 assists so far in 12 games this season. Count me in as someone that's kind of shocked that he hasn't scored a goal yet. Not going to lie, that's a bit underwhelming. But RHB is still the little engine that could, okay? He's one of these guys that you can plug anywhere in the lineup. And he's always going to work his nuts to the bone. But you know what sucks? No matter how you slice and dice it. Guys, going from 14 goals in 34 games last season to right now he's got, what, 0 goals in 12? Yeah, sorry. I know he's a bit of a fan favorite and this is going to be unpopular, but he's been a tad underwhelming so far this season for me. Next up is Sammy Boy, Samuel Mantenball. I'm just going to place him in the good tier because he's not awesome, but he's good. Holy smokes. Sean Monaghan is next. Just like Caden Gooley, I feel like Sean Monaghan kind of deserves his, his own tier. I said it before and I'll say it again. He's like corn. He refuses to become shit. You could put him anywhere in the Canadians lineup with anyone, with you, with me. And he's always going to put up numbers. 13 points right now in 15 games. He leads the team at the faceoff dot over 6. 60%. He's unbelievable, and he's also signed to a really fair contract. He's definitely going in the awesome tier, and he's one of the best stories on the team right now. And last but not least, we got Tan Man, Tanner Pearson, who's also been looking pretty sharp so far with the Canadians. Six points in 15 games. He's got a matching lobster hand, just like Brendan Gallagher, and for some reason, two lobsters on one line, it just... <laughs> It clicks. He could be a good trade chip at the deadline, and I'm actually going to put him on the good list. Just in case. Just in case Ken Holland watches this channel regularly and he's sniffing out some trade chips. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotcha. But that pretty much does it. Now, right away, I didn't notice Jake Allen, guys. For some reason, he's not on this list. Now, I'd probably put him somewhere between average and good. Can I do that? 
because I just did. And obviously when you're grading so many guys after just, what, 15 games, there's going to be a lot of disagreements. Your list would probably look way different than mine. You can go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Let me know who you would change. If you'd like to see me make another one later on in the season, maybe at the halfway point, let me know. Don't forget to slap the like button on the way out of here. And hey, well, see you next time.